Let us solve the problem number 2 based on the calculation of Nyquist rate and according to the problem there is a time domain signal xt having the Nyquist rate equal to omega s and we need to determine the Nyquist rate for each of the following signals. There are 4 signals and we need to calculate the Nyquist rate for all the 4 signals. Let's begin our calculation of Nyquist rate for the first signal. The first signal is xt plus xt minus 1 and this is our message signal. So mt is equal to xt plus xt minus 1 and we are required to calculate the Nyquist rate of the message signal. And in the problem, it is given that xt is having the Nyquist rate equal to omega s. Signal xt is having the Nyquist rate equal to omega s. This means xt will have the Nyquist rate equal to omega s. And therefore, xt minus 1 will also have the Nyquist rate equal to omega s. Why? Because xt minus 1 we are getting after performing the time shifting on xt and we know there is no effect of time shifting on the Nyquist rate. So when you perform the time shifting, time shifting and you obtain a new signal xt minus 1 then this signal and this signal will have the same Nyquist rate. And in the problem, it is given that xt is having the Nyquist rate equal to omega s. Therefore, xt minus 1 will also have the same Nyquist rate omega s. And now you can see that the message signal is equal to the sum of these two signals, xt and xt minus 1. And to get the Nyquist rate of mt, to get its Nyquist rate, we need to choose the Nyquist rate which is maximum and here you can see the two Nyquist rates are same. So directly you will get the Nyquist rate of mt as omega s. So this is the answer. So you can see that using the properties we can easily calculate the Nyquist rate and now we will move on to the second message signal and this time the message signal is equal to dxt over dt. So this time the message signal is equal to one time derivative of signal xt and uh, we know the differentiation will not change the Nyquist rate. So if the original signal which is xt is having the Nyquist rate as omega s then dxt over dt will also have the same Nyquist rate. So this is the answer. Now let's move on to the third message signal and it is equal to x square t or you can write x t whole square and we know the property we know the property if x t is having omega s as the Nyquist rate then x t power n will have n multiplied to omega s as the Nyquist rate and here if you compare this with this you will find n is equal to 2. So you will get the Nyquist rate of this signal equal to 2 multiplied to omega s. So finally we are getting twice of omega s as the Nyquist rate. This is the answer. Now we will calculate the Nyquist rate of the final signal we are having which is xt multiplied to cos omega st cos omega st this question is little bit complicated as compared to these straightforward questions in this case we are having the message signal as the product of two signals the first one is let's say m1t and the second one cos omega st is let's say m2t and uh, we know the Nyquist rate of this signal, the Nyquist rate of mt is equal to the Nyquist rate of m1t, let's call it omega s1 plus the Nyquist rate of m2t, let's call it omega s2. 
omega s1 is the Nyquist rate of xt and it is given in the question that it is equal to omega s and cos omega st will have the Nyquist rate omega s2 equal to twice of omega m and omega m is equal to omega s there is only one frequency so it will be the maximum frequency component so omega m is equal to omega s so we are getting omega s2 equal to twice of omega s so finally we are getting the Nyquist rate as omega s1 which is omega s plus omega s2 which is twice of omega s when you add omega s and twice of omega s you will get Nyquist rate equal to three times omega s this is the answer so in this way we have calculated the Nyquist rate for all the four signals and I hope it is clear to you how to calculate the Nyquist rate. So this is all for this lecture. See you in the next one.